Hi everyone, thank you for attending my talk. My name is Konstantinos Georgiou from Ryerson University. Uh, I will talk about how to search a half line with a probabilistically faulty searcher. This is joint work with Anthony Bonato, Kalum McCrory, and Pavel Pralat. What you see here is the outline of my talk. I will start by defining the problem and by giving you uh, our results uh, at a high level. Our problem is classified as a search type problem. We have a unit speed searcher who starts at the origin of a half line. The searcher can move anywhere on the half line, changing directions without incurring extra time. At some unknown distance from the origin, there is an item, I will also call it a treasure, that the searcher cannot see. Every time the searcher vis visits the item, there is a known probability P of detecting uh, that hidden item, and every visitation is uh, an independent uh, Bernoulli trial. So another way to think about it is that the searcher is faulty and fails to detect the treasure with probability 1 minus P independently and with every trial. The objective is to design searches trajectories so as to minimize the worst case expected detection time. For the problem I just mentioned, we have two main contributions that here I state at the high level and later, later I will make a formal. Theorem one, we identify the best possible algorithm among the family of so-called monotone algorithms that were previously conjectured to be optimal for a related problem, and which I will discuss later. This means we give matching upper and lower bounds for this special family of algorithms. In theorem number two, we design a sequence of non-monotone algorithms, each deviating more and more from being monotone and which induce improved performance. Therefore, as a corollary, we also obtain that monotone algorithms are not optimal for searching the half line with a prob probabilistically faulty searcher. Next, I move to a very short discussion on related work. As already mentioned, our results pertain to a search type optimization problem, and similar problems have resulted in numerous publications, even books. In this presentation, I will just make a few references to the most relevant literature, and I will ask you to see our paper for uh, a complete uh, uh, literature review. Just to give you a rough idea of the type of related problems already considered and that are very similar to a problem, some variations involve uh, termination criteria, for example, whether the treasure is found by the first or a last searcher, different domains. We consider um, the half line, but other search domains include the line, the circle, or even graphs. The type of analysis. We do worst case expected competitive analysis, but one could also do uh, average case analysis as well as study trade-offs. Uh, another variation has to do with searcher specifications, including number of robots, speeds, faults, etc. And these are just to name a few. Now, there are three results closely related to our work. First, it is uh, the book uh, that you see at the top of the slide, Theory of Search Games Rendezvous by Alpern and Gall, uh, where our problem was defined. Um, this is where it was conjectured that monotone algorithms are optimal for, for probabilistically faulty robot searching the line, or in other words, for searching two rays, whereas we study uh, the half line, which is one ray. Second is the 1993 paper of Baeza Yates et al., who studied the search problem on the line with um, a non-faulty searcher. And third, it is the 2015 result of by Angelopoulos, who studied a similar problem on M rays and for a similar but not equivalent notion of probabilistically faulty searcher. I will now briefly discuss the result of Baeza Yates et al. mostly 
to illustrate the notion of a monotone trajectory. In this problem, the search domain is a line, and as uh, in our case, a unit speed robot starts from an arbitrary point that uh, I call the origin. Again, there is a hidden treasure at a known distance, but now the searcher is not faulty and detects the treasure if she walks over it. The objective is to design a trajectory so as to minimize the worst case relative time for finding the treasure. And when I say relatively, I mean with respect to the distance. A celebrated result of the same paper says that an optimal algorithm for this problem is to search in alternating directions, each time expanding the search space geometrically. What makes this algorithm a monotone is that each time the searcher stops expanding the search space, she returns to the origin before expanding the search space again. Now, I move to a formal description of our problem, and after that, I will be able to quantify our results. What I need is to formally define the performance of the search trajectory. For this, we do the following. For any placement of the treasure d away from the origin, d is at least one, we compute the expected detection time and we normalize by p over d, where p is the probability of successfully detecting the treasure with one trial. Taking now the supremum over all d at least one gives the so-called competitive ratio of the algorithm. The reason we normalize by d is so that for each p, the performance remains bounded. Otherwise, placing the treasure arbitrarily far away from the origin would induce unbounded detection time. We also normalize by the detection probability because even if we knew where the treasure is, we would need an expected one over p trials to find the treasure. And with this normalization, the competitive ratio remains constant, as I will show you later, for every p between 0 and 1. And finally, we uh, require that the treasure is at least one away from the origin. And what I mean here is that uh, this lower bound of 1 between the treasure and the origin is known to the algorithm, because otherwise one can show that no algorithm can have bounded uh, competitive ratio. We are now ready to show you in the next slide some of our results and I will also avoid technicalities. The graph here depicts the performance, the competitive ratio of various algorithms as a function of p. First, with purple color, you see the competitive ratio of the best possible monotone algorithm. Notably, its performance is not even monotone, maybe a hint for that such an algorithm cannot be optimal. And then you see the improved performances of four more non-monotone algorithms with colors blue, yellow, green, and orange, showing that the monotone algorithm above is not optimal. And something interesting to observe is that the derived competitive ratios for the sub-monotone uh, algorithms always fall between three and four. Next, I will just give you a minor flavor of how the results were obtained, and I will start uh, with the uh, optimal result we have for monotone algorithms. Our algorithm is determined by a sequence of turning points that increase geometrically. We fix a constant b, which is allowed to depend on p, so the turning points are b to the power of 0, b to the power of 1, b to the power of 2, and so on. The trajectory is monotone, meaning that every time the searcher reaches a turning point, she goes all the way back to the origin before going to the next turning point. For such a tra trajectory, one can show that condition on that the treasure is between any two consecutive turning points, then the worst placement is arbitrarily close to the earlier turning point. And second, one can show that the further away the treasure is, the worst expected uh, detection time is. And with the previous two statements, one can derive the competitive ratio as a, fu as a function of p, b, and then one needs to choose the optimal b as a function of p that minimizes 
uh, the competitive ratio. Now, how can we show that the previous monotone algorithm is optimal in the family of monotone algorithms? The result of ours is quite technical. The high level idea is to identify such an algorithm by its turning points, uh, call them x sub i, uh, an infinite sequence, and then for any fixed natural number L, we can consider the problem of minimizing the competitive ratio subject to that the treasure is placed only arbitrarily close to the first L many turning points. Now this gives rise to a nonlinear program on variables, the competitive ratio and the L of the turning points. And the idea then is to show that for a, a big enough L, the value of that nonlinear program is at least the competitive ratio we derived in the positive result. In the next few slides, I will sketch for you our results pertaining to non-monotone algorithms that we call sub-monotone. So what is a sub-monotone algorithm? Here, I illustrate for you three algorithms. The top one is the monotone algorithm we saw previously. I also call it zero sub-monotone because in between the two basic turning points, there are no, there are zero detours. In the middle, you see an example of an one sub-monotone algorithm. It involves one detour in between two basic turning uh, points, exactly as you see in the figure. And I don't want to describe in more detail the trajectory because I will not use it uh, more in this talk. And finally, at the bottom, you see an example of a two sub-monotone uh, algorithm, which has two detours in between the basic turning points. Intuitively, its detour gives rise to uh, a zigzag type trajectory that visits parts within the basic, uh, uh, the backbone turning points multiple times. Also, it should be clear that the higher the number of detours, the more the algorithm deviates in some sense from being uh, monotone. And this is how we arrive at the notion of a T sub monotone uh, trajectory. Um, and such a trajectory is identified by the backbone sequence of uh, turning points that increase geometrically exactly as before, as well as by T many detours given by equally many parameters that here I denote by gamma uh, sub j, ranging between uh, uh, zero and one. Now, choosing the parameters is done by a highly technical argument. The main idea is the following. First, for any uh, fixed p, we would like to compute the values of gamma j as functions of p and p, so that uh, the competitive ratio becomes independent of the placement of the treasure. Second, having a formula for the competitive ratio as a function of b and p, we could try to optimize with respect to b. Now, however, uh, the approach as just described is not exactly uh, possible. Instead, we define a nonlinear program uh, whose feasible solutions uh, correspond in some sense to uh, T sub monotone algorithms, and then we provide heuristic solutions to the nonlinear program again by highly uh, technical arguments. Overall, the proposed parameters for our uh, T sub monotone algorithms are computed numerically as roots to polynomials of degree two times T. On the other hand, for T equals one and two, uh, that is for one sub monotone and two sub monotone algorithms, we do obtain clause formulas for our results. But for every T three or more, uh, the performance uh, I report here uh, was computed numerically. And that brings us back to the graph that depicts the competitive ratio of various uh, algorithms. Uh, and please look at the top of the slides. What you see is the competitive ratio of T sub monotone algorithms, where T uh, is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, inducing better and better performance. For increasing values of T, I show you at the bottom of the slide 
the marginal improvement we obtain by increasing the number of detours up to t equals 10. In fact, the marginal improvements uh, that I depict here are also scaled by uh, 4 to the power of t so that um, when t equals 10, the improvement is literally negligible. Again, these results were obtained numerically. However, what we also proved formally is that, um, uh, and this is something I do not show you in the slide, uh, what we have proved is that even if we allow t to tend to infinity, the competitive ratio is nearly the orange curve you see uh, at the top graph. And that was the end of the report of our results. I will finish this talk with some future directions and open problems. Note that we did not prove any lower bound for our sub-monotone algorithms. Are they improvable? My conjecture is uh, yes. Can we prove general lower bounds for any P? Uh, this question seems very challenging. And maybe a few easier lower bound questions are the following. One can show easily that uh, when P equals one or, tends, or when P tends to one, uh, uh, the uh, three is the lower bound to the competitive ratio. At the same time, all our algorithms have competitive ratio four when P, P tends to zero. Is that the lower bound, is that the matching lower bound for any algorithm? And finally, the performance of our algorithms are all above line uh, four minus P. Can we prove that this is a lower bound uh, to any algorithm? And this is the end of my talk. Uh, thank you for attending.